but Bortle here with the player interview with, please introduce yourself to the world, man. Um, Luke Saku. My understanding, you placed uh, fifth and first back-to-back regional Saturday, Sunday. Which events, bro? Uh, I got first at Omaha, Nebraska, and fifth at Iowa, Des Moines this weekend. Sweet. With this specific list, no changes? No changes. Same, same list, card for card. Okay, you did say you went undefeated on Sunday. What deck took you out on Saturday? I had uh, I was X one one on Saturday, and my only loss was uh, to Sword Soul because I uh, I forgot Draco Berserker just gained attack forever. So my only loss was literally to killing myself. Oh man, that's pretty nice. Well, I mean, it's not nice, yeah, but uh, you you totally like changed it up to where you uh, went straight up undefeated the next day. Before we jump into the actual deck profile, though, what made you decide to play this list? Uh, this list has just uh, a lot more capability of playing through the tier board and like simpler terms You just have more buttons than your opponent. You just have more things that you can do. So it's a lot easier to play through things um, And as long as you don't get dwellered, you can basically play through any board that just does so much You're gonna go ahead and uh, take it away with the rest of the deck profile, but before then any shout outs, man Yeah, I want to give a shout out to the the Tulsa guys Nathan Cooper and Ethan and then the OKC guys of course uh, with uh, Jordano Max and Eric and Danny Please, well, without further ado, please take away with the rest of the deck profile man. Uh, so one Rhino Heart. Rhino Heart might get cut in the future It's just a, a thing to tag out into for uh, for kit It's a lot worse than this build because we don't play Kaleido because there's just no room for it in the extra uh, And then like normal tier stuff you just play other nine tier names and four field spells and an instant fusion and Then you go six six dimples three beaver three angler uh, hitting Angler is it's actually insane. I call it the fourth tier name because uh, that's what it equates to. Because it summons two beavers from deck. Uh, the two beavers contribute to making Mannequin Cat. Um, and it's not just hand trap prevention, but like if they hand trap you, they bestial you, you get to summon Cyberstein from deck. Which is, uh, it's it's like better than activating a tier name because you also get a free body off of it. There's like other things they can do. Like if they kill back you, you can also just summon a Shuffle Guy from deck. So it's like counterproductive for them at that point to attempt to hand trap you. Uh, and then if they have missed you and they just leave something in their graveyard, you just get to like actively make plays. Or if you hit like a, a mil five guy, you can like actively make plays um, on turn zero that the normal tier deck just cannot do. So six, six Nimbles, the, the Cyberstein, uh, three Keldo, three Medora, three Kelbeck, one Aguido, and the Orange Light. Uh, I feel like this deck needed to play Orange Light so a little more high rolly. Um, something cool you can do with Orange Light, though, is uh, if you have Mannequin Cat and Sprint, which you should get every game, uh, and you're starting to like out-tempo your opponent, it's like pretty pretty easy to Mannequin Cat show them, summon back like a Kelbeck from their graveyard, um, and then summon an Orange Light from their deck, and then you can go Sprint Effect to detach from Mannequin Cat, bounce your Orange Light to hand, which is super, <laughs> it's super broken. <laughs> but as far as the Cyberstein goes, how did that fare for you in this event? Uh, it was it was really solid. Um, the the life point thing doesn't really matter. Uh, you sign it out if there's like ten minutes left going into game three, uh, just to just to be safe, be protected. You don't want to get screwed out, screwed yeah. over for no reason. Um, but the the five thousand life points thing doesn't matter. If your board's getting broken, you're losing the game anyways. Um, it's just how modern Yu Gi Oh works. And you have Avermax to protect you most of the time. Uh, the only thing that really really hurts is uh, if they t- somehow tactics your Avermax and you messed up and put something in attack. Um, because just Avermax just instantly kills you because you have 3,000 life points left. No mystery here. It looks like you're only maining one bestial monster. Why is that? It's just the single Druid Swarm to take back off of Dark. Uh, this, Like I said at the beginning, if you don't get Dwellered, you should win the game. Uh, people are off of main deck crime, and they're starting to play into Super Poly, so I felt like the, the six spell cards in the main deck that says your opponent cannot respond are probably the best options to stopping Dweller. In this build, I think it's better just to, to guarantee having a like a starting line of play to, to play through Dweller. Okay, and you did already talk about the six spells that are like uh, pretty much your opponent cannot respond to. And uh, it's cool seeing Droplet back again. You haven't really seen Droplet. How was Droplet during these events, man? Uh, Droplet was amazing. Yeah, uh, basically everyone has rotated off of main deck crime. Uh, randomly, LeBlanc is still on, and I saw that from his profile from this past weekend. Um, but like a, a vast majority are off of main deck uh, prime, which is good. They'll side in end game too, but that's just it's just how it goes. If they if they go first and they side in crime um, and they god hand you, it's just it's just Yu Gi Oh. Sometimes there's just no beating those those go first turns. Okay, and as far as the Tarlament, uh spell trap engines uh, like uh, Solik, 
Crime, uh, Scream. You didn't miss any of those in the main deck? No. So uh, Soliac is the one that would mainly be milled that you'd miss, right? Uh, be two Soliac and one Scream. Uh, but those were really replaced by the Anglers. So you have the same amount of good mills. And then uh, I, I would argue that milling Angler is much better than milling either of those cards. It's to the how much it does for you. I do like that this is a perfect 40. Maximize consistency. Very nice. Yeah, never playing 41. There you go. Would you like to run down the extra deck? Yeah. So uh, one Mannequin Cat, one Gigantic Dweller, Baguska Zeus. Uh, Giordano said something on uh, Saturday, which was funny. But Baguska is just Dweller for bad decks. <laughs> uh, it's it's Dweller for decks that don't use their resources correctly, so they lose. I don't know. It's it's two rank four floodgates, and then the best rank two ever printed and gigantic. Gigantic is there for a Zeus vessel or to clear your spren from the extra monster zone, so that you can make dark. There there are a lot of times when you play against your opponent, and as soon as they summon spren, you like play into their dark a little more. Like you'll care less about your magnum by getting shuffled back in this turn, or like your Kaleida will hit grave and they'll they'll be able to stop it from coming back, and you like won't care as much because they have spren there. That's what Gigantic lets you abuse, is because it like moves your, your sprint out of the extra monsters on the turn you summon it. And then, then Zeus is just Zeus. That's like the best card ever printed. Lynx. There's like IP Avermax. That's like a package. You pretty much just want to end on Elf, IP, Sprint, Mannequin, and Rolk. That's like pretty much your standard end board. And then the IP contributes to making Avermax so you don't die. And then Avermax is... For, for lower entry to your players, Avermax is extremely hard to out. It, it's a gimmick card, right? So as soon yeah. as you learn how to out the gimmick efficiently, it doesn't do as good as it should be doing against the lower tier players. But it's still worth playing in this list specifically because of how low your life points can get with Cyberstein. Elf, Spren, Dark. Uh, those three cards should be banned, to be honest. like th Those are actually the best extra deck cards ever printed. Or Fusions, there's Mud Dragon, Garura, Dragos, Topelia, Kit, and Roll Kalos. Uh, Kaleido's not needed just because there's there's like no room for it. Kaleido's like one of the better extra deck cards. Sweet explanation on the extra deck overall. Would you like to run down this side deck? I'm seeing some spice in here already. Uh, the, the side deck is where the nimble build is like extremely solid. So so typically you'll go lose die roll or win die roll. Um, you're, obviously your game plan is to win game one, which should be should be pretty easy. That's how the deck is set up to do. It's it's meant to win game one. A great op a great chance to play through their tier board. Say they god hand you, they end on on Dweller Elf, Elido, Roll Kalos. Prime and a Soliac. That's that's just something you can't play through sometimes. Even if you're playing forty card tier, just regular tier, you're playing Sprite. That's that board's unbreakable most of the time. But game three with this deck, uh, this deck is actually unbeatable. You'll you'll set up the same board that I mentioned earlier of um, Sprint, Elf, IP, Mannequin, Rokalos. Except now you'll have uh, Mannequin Cat to summon the Tetsudo or Rat Newman. Newman's an Aqua, so it can't be destroyed by battle because of Rokalos. But it can't be destroyed by battle, which is crazy. The The big weakness to this is Super Poly, because you can Super Poly Tetsudo and uh, Roll Kalos for a Garura, because it's under 18, which is funny. I don't know. The The Newman thing is just so efficient at ending the mirror fast. If you're going first, the game should end in about eight minutes. Uh, yeah, one Chaos Hunter, it's because uh, it like helps you beat Flunderies. Uh, another thing with this deck is, like, its best matchup is the Tear Mirror and Flunder, uh, because going first, you just instantly have the ability to Chaos Hunter them, get unshifted. Or if your hand's, like, not fantastic, you can just go Mannequin Cat, summon back their shifter, uh, and then summon Banshee from deck if you don't have other lines of play. I mean, obviously, if other lines of play, you just summon Chaos Hunter, basically become unshifted and play the game. Okay, and you mentioned Flunder. I'm already seeing the one copy of Banshee in Zombie World. It's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's really efficient way to out that uh that deck. The deck's not great, but if it gets rolling, sometimes it's it's hard to get ahead. And, uh, the one scatter shot, and you have triple dark rulers. Yeah, the three dark rulers to cover your sprite matchup. I'd argue that sprite is one of your less fantastic matchups with this deck, just because Omni negates really hurt a deck that has fewer starting lines of play, uh, whereas this deck has. A normal summon and then Sharon. Um, and then sometimes there's two card combos to continue playing, like Super Poly Angler or Droplet Angler or like Keldo with a, an Earth Fairy. But like you have a, a still a minimized way to start interacting with the game. And Dark Ruler really helps with that because the sprite matchup stuff. Like the three random tier limit cards, you play one heartbeat for the, um, the, the cringy runic deck, Floodgate Pile. 
and then one scream and one crime for the uh, go first side. Going first, you usually side out three droplets and then put in scream, crime, and Tetsuo Rat Newman against the mirror. And overall, I, I assume um, you didn't want to like maybe side more bestial options, or did that ever come up for you? Not really. So, so I think bestials are great. They're just huge. They some they're summon skulls that also stop one of your opponent's three tier limit names. The problem is, is that a good tier limit player has more than two lines of play. If you'll watch like a, a very below, like a, an average tier limit player, even they have two lines of play. It's like normal Rhino Heart and Mixed Friend. So two Bist Shields always stops them. But if you play against a good tier limit player, uh, two Bist Shields is never enough. Unless their hand is like ass, the two is just not enough. They're still at least playing to get to like Kaleido Soliac, and that is hard to beat on its own because you only have three cards left to play through that. I don't think Bistials are as integral into the uh, the tier matchup as everyone thinks they are, especially with, with Redoer being as, as common in the metagame as it is. Yo, thank you for explaining everything, and it sounds like you went to every single one of these extra deck choices. Yeah, yeah, the, the extra deck's really tight. I mean, we, we had to cut Kaleido, which is uh, like a staple tier card. But I mean, we have everything you'll need for a game. So, we got up there. Yes, you did, man. Fifth place Saturday, first place on Sunday. The next day, even. 48 hours. Insane. Or within 24 hours. Jeez. All right, man. <laughs> uh, well, that's going to be it. Thank you so much, Luke, for being on the channel today, man. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Our problem. And listeners, if you're not part of Bortle Nation, stuff from Bortle. It's that easy and it's free. Oh, God, yes. Until next time, <laughs> everyone. Bortle out.